Wow. I've got a lot to say, people. Hey guys, and welcome back to the JTO channel. And this is your match review of Liverpool 1, Chelsea 1. And I have got a lot to say, positive and negative. We're going to get into the Reese James incident. Why Anthony Taylor is the biggest fraud, the worst referee I have ever seen in my entire life. Yeah? He's up there with Ovrabo. Yeah? Honestly. But the defensive masterclass that my team just put in, the fact that Liverpool couldn't break down 10-man Chelsea, they couldn't do it. You're dead food, Liverpool. You couldn't break us down. What was Salah doing? Nothing. Nada. Jota, nothing. Mane, nothing. Trent, nothing. Isolated you, man. Yeah? Because you needed to cheat. You needed help. You needed help from the referee to even have a chance in this game. Because I guarantee you, if we had 11 men on that pitch, we would have slaughtered them. And we should have slaughtered them anyway, even before they flipping got the penalty. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you people? Right. Let's talk about that first half and we'll get to the second half performance. But that first half, yeah? I thought, the first 10, 20 minutes, I thought Liverpool... Clearly, the crowd was very loud, very frustrated at times, so intentionally, given the, you know, all the jeering at us every single time, at every single opportunity. They were up for it, the fans. For 20, 20 minutes, they were very, very up for it. They were going and going at us, and we defended well, like I was saying. And for me, at times, the one thing I'll say about that first half, before I get into the incident with the Reese James thingy, all that bullshit, right, was the poor decision-making. Now, obviously... Like I said, first 10, 20 minutes, I explained that. But then, 22 minutes in, Kai Havertz scores a ridiculous header into the back of the net. I think Reese James may have got the assist, if I'm not wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. Maybe Marcus Alonso, but somebody took the corner anyway. But you get what I'm trying to say. So, we scored the goal, and from the second we scored, we was all over them, fam. Fam, they did not have a chance in hell until the incident happened, yeah? But what was annoying me was the decision-making from Lukaku, from Havertz, from Mount. At times where Luka when, when Lukaku should have passed, passed to Havertz, he gives it to Mason Mount. Uh, at times when Havertz should have given it to Lukaku, he gives it to Mount. Mount gives it to Lukaku instead of Havertz, vice versa. They all kept making poor decisions. And then there was the odd decision from Kante. There was one where Kante was through. Lukaku was in the middle. Spaces them saying, give it to... Lukaku, oh, he gives it to Kai Havertz. It was a madness. And for me, before even the incident happened, we should have been 2 3 nil up because we were creating so many chances for ourselves. We were, opening them, we were opening them up because we were defending and we were defending well. And we went on the counter-attack. Liverpool were making mistakes. Lukaku was growing into the game because at the beginning, Ossie van Dijk was... He had him, I'm not going to lie. He did have him in that first 10, 20 minutes. I think from then on, Lukaku started to get into the game and start bullying you know, well, not bullying, but he started to handle Van Dijk at the very least. Now, let's get into this incident. So the corner comes in, right? One of our players fluffs it. Matip, um, Matip keeps it um, in play. Mendy tries to catch it. Alonso tries to head it. It scuffles. The, the ball's bouncing around and somebody shoots. I think it's Mane or Jota. It literally hits Reese James. Yeah? On his thigh. You can't see my thigh, but it hits his thigh and then it hits his arm. And they appeal for a penalty, right? Cool. Anthony Taylor, this waste man, oh my God. Do you know how many times this guy has cost us from FA Cup finals and etc.? I've had enough. I have had enough of this guy. I don't want him managing Chelsea games because every time he does, he helps the other team. If you have not seen the clip, yeah, he goes over to the VAR monitor, yeah, and by the time he gets there, what he's seeing is literally the ball when it hits Reese James's arm. So he has not seen the fact that it's got to his thigh and then it's gone to his arm. He's just seen a frozen picture of it going to his hand. He didn't even Go all the way fully to the monitor, have a look. He, he literally, let's say you lot, you're, you're there, yeah? I'm suppo he's supposed to be right here. He got here and he said, he saw it, he said, yeah, yeah, penalty, penalty. Red card for Reese James on top of that because he deliberately handballed it. You could have seen the flipping clip and if he had seen it, he wouldn't have given a flipping red card to Reese James. 
Maybe he would have given a penalty, but not a red card. It hit his thigh. If it hit your thigh, then your arm. Oh, what? So is it a rule that if it just hits your arm regardless? So if it hits your arm regardless, yeah, it's a penalty anyway. What sort of rule is that? It's bullshit. And I couldn't believe it. Then he wants to give out yellow cards to Rudiger because he's appealing. And then that dickhead Salah puts his penalty in. And then Henderson tries to fight Mendy as if you're going to win the battle anyway, mate. Pipe down, mate. What's wrong with you? Dickhead. I swear to God. Bro, you lot don't understand, yeah? When that halftime whistle blew, my head was gone. Head was gone, spinning. I was effing and jeffing to Anthony Taylor because that bold... <sighs> he cost us the game today. He cost us three points today. I don't care what anybody tells me. He cost us three points. And the fact that he sent Rhys James off, yeah? And not even seen the clip. He literally saw a photo. He li If you go look at it, he saw a photo when it hit his arm. Not when it saw it to his fucking thigh and then to his arm. <sighs> anyway, we get into the second half. Tuchel makes some changes. Um, he brings off N'Golo Kante from Hotel Kovacic. I'm guessing that's an N'Golo Kante injury, sort of, maybe a precaution or something like that. And because we're down to 10 men, because of the bold fraud that Anthony Taylor is, yeah, because he doesn't want to go look at the full clip. He just wants to see the photo. He doesn't, if I even reached halfway, didn't even fully go to the monitor. The absolute clown, the waste man. I swear to God, if I see this guy manage another Chelsea game again, I swear, I won't even think we'll win. Honestly, I've had enough in a big game, and if he's ma and if he's refereeing it, I don't know anymore. But let's get into the second half, right? Obviously, like I said, Ko Kovacic came on for Kante, um, Mason Mount was pointing to midfield, and uh, who else was sacrificed? Havertz was sacrificed for Thiago Silva to come on, as Aspilicueta went to right wing back, and we had a simple back three of Christensen, Thiago Silva, and Rudiger. Marcus Onza as left wing back, and I have to say, man, that defense, Rudiger, Aspi, Christensen get tens. They get tens. I've already given you a spoiler of my player ratings video, and I'm gonna. I'll tell you why in depth as to each one why they deserve it. Obviously, Christensen got man of the match. I wouldn't have minded if it was Mendy. Wouldn't have minded if it was Aspi. Wouldn't have minded if it was Rudiger. Because oh my God, that defensive masterclass in that second half. There is a reason why defensively we are the best in Europe. We are the best in Europe, man. Honestly, 32 clean sheets last season. That's astonishing. That's unbelievable. 10-man Chelsea, 11-man Liverpool could not break down 10-man Chelsea. Yeah, All the way to the point where they were just taking long shots and inshallah. Long shots and inshallah it was for Liverpool Football Club. Yeah, And they ain't winning the league this season. They didn't impress me at all today. Yeah, The only thing they're good at is their Gengar pressing style. That's it. On the ball, they can break sh down. I told you if, you, can, if you have discipline against Liverpool, they will not score goals. Simple as that. I'm sorry, but 10-man Chelsea, there's a reason why we were that good. And I, uh, you know what, yeah? And then in the first, like, 10, 20 minutes, because Lukaku was on his own, we struggled, to be fair. On the ball, we were struggling massively. Every time we got it, we just booted it out, booted it out every single time. But then slowly, surely, Kovacic was getting into the rhythm of the game. Marcos Alonso started to get involved more. Lukaku started to get involved. Mason Mount, Aspi, we started to, at periods of the second half, actually control the game. It wasn't for long, but we actually, it was alright. Obviously, there were two attacks in particular I want to talk about. Obviously, the first one was when, um, I think, Alonso switched out to Aspilicueta. Aspilicueta puts the ball in. Uh, Marcus Sonza heads it back. Lukaku shoots, gets blocked, unfortunately. Um, but what do you expect? I'm not going to have a go at Lukaku today because at the end of the day, in the first 20 minutes of the first half, I thought Van Dijk had him. The rest of the half, up until the incident, I thought he handled him well and he actually managed to get past Van Dijk and Matic. But in the second half, it was a struggle. But even at times, he still managed to link up with Mason Mount, even Mateo Kovacic. And that chance from Kovacic, oh my God. I couldn't believe it because Kovacic's giving it to him, yeah? He's holding it up. Kovacic's making the run. I'm thinking, yes, this is your moment, Kovacic. He takes a poor touch. He still manages to get the shot off, but it's an easy save for Alisson. And at that moment, I was like, no... I was thinking if that was like a Mason Mount or something like that, even a Kante to an extent, I would have, honestly, I think it would have been better. And I'm sorry, we could have nicked this game. I was like, I was thinking, I'll take a draw, I'll take a draw. And then I was slowly getting optimistic, thinking maybe we can get, you know, uh, uh, a win here. But for me, that second half was a masterclass, man. I, 
I couldn't have asked for a better defensive performance. And that shows to me that we are going to be so tough to beat this season. This team is going to be so tough. The only way you beat us this season, the only way you beat Chelsea is if Chelsea have an off day. It's honestly the only way. Because us like that, not many teams are beating us this season. In this league I'm talking about. Not many teams. Liverpool can do it, okay? And if you do beat us, it's because we played badly, okay? Or, or because your long shot hit the top bins, just like Tillemans did in the FA Cup final. It'd have to take something like that to actually defeat this Chelsea team. And a bit of luck too. That is really it. But for me, we'll take the draw. We're joint top of the league still with West Ham and Liverpool, unfortunately. But I'm, that's made me, that defensive team effort from everybody, because everyone had to put a shift in. It's not just Rudy Gutiago, Silva, Christensen, Aspi and Alonso and Mendy. you got to give credit to Mason Mount. He had to obviously drop deeper, a lot deeper, uh, alongside Jorginho and Mateo Kovacic. Jorginho grew into the game, made a couple mistakes here and there, but I can't really blame him like that. Kovacic was very good in that half. Very, very good. I liked Kovacic's second half performance. I liked Thiago Silva's second half performance. Me personally, they gave man of the match obviously to Christensen, but me personally, I would have given it to Rudiger or Mendy, simply because with Mendy, every time Liverpool took a shot or they had a chance, Mendy was always there to save it. And as well, when Mendy didn't have to save, it was mainly because for me of Rudiger, because obviously all game they were targeting Marcus Alonso. And it was why I didn't want Marcus Alonso to play, because they were going to target him. And for me, Marcus Alonso had an OK game. I thought actually going forward, he was actually pretty good today. Um, I thought defensively... He had his moments here, he had his moments there, it was a bit 50-50, do you understand what I'm trying to say? But Rudiger had him covered every single time, winning headers, um, he, he pocketed Salah, he put Salah in his pocket, that whole second half man, that whole second half he put him in his pocket, Salah did not do anything, whilst Christensen put Mane in his pocket fam, yeah, and Aspilicueta dealt with Robertson so well. And at the end, I thought Alonso done a decent job on Trent as well. So at the end of the day, it was a defensive masterclass from everyone. Jorginho, Kovacic, Tra Trevor Chalobah when he came on, Mason Mount did very, very well um, to contain Fabinho, Thiago when he came on, and Henderson. And then obviously Lukaku, it was a very hard half for him. He knew we weren't going to attack much, but he, he had his moments of brilliance where he hold up the ball and he linked up with the teammates. So yeah, guys. If you do enjoy this, if you did enjoy this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Tell me, please, your thoughts on the incident, the red card incident. Um, Reese James getting sent off, and if you thought it was a red card, I am interested to know. Do you think it was a red card? Do you think it was a penalty? Me personally, it wasn't a penalty because it hit his thigh, then it hit his arm. But tell me your thoughts down below. Are you happy with the draw considering the circumstances? And yeah, guys, like, comment, subscribe, turn those post notifications, and I'll see you in a bit because I'm gonna make my player ratings video as well, guys. <sighs> What a draw, what a game. And uh, Anthony Taylor, you are a waste man. Peace.